Okay, now when you think about decay, it sort of sounds gross, like, you know, bodies sort of decaying and stuff. But really, in fact, decay does happen a lot in nature, especially with radioactive substances. And in fact, usually with, with decay, what you have is half-life. That means that you have some radioactive substance that after some time has half as much, and then at that exact same time has half as much and half as much and so on. So let me try to illustrate this with, with sort of a simple visual example. And of course, if you're going to use a radioactive substances, you have to wear gloves. So, so radioactive substance might look something like this, and then in a certain period you have half as much. Well, now you have that. And if you wait even longer, you would have half as much as that. So in fact, really, maybe a better example would be this. Let's say the half-life of this was, was uh, five years. That means that in five years you would have half as much. In another five years you would have half as much. In another five years you would have half of that, and so on. You would always have something, a radioactive decay, something that sort of keeps going on. Anyway. Uh, here's, an, here's an actual real-world type radio decay problem that we can look at together. Now, it turns out that uh, uh, a, a nuclear a radioactive uh, substance by the name of sodium-24 is a radioactive uh, isotope that uh, doctors use to sort of put into the body and monitor certain functions. Anyway, assuming that we have a patient where we've inserted four micrograms of this sodium-24 into the body, and so this is good. We're trying, to, we're trying to help the patient. This is not gross. And then the amount of micrograms in the body remaining after T hours is given by actually a decaying function because there's less and less in the body. It slowly decays. Of course, that person will always have some in the body uh, for as long as the person lives, unfortunately. But who, so what? So anyway, so here, let's say this is the amount remaining. And in fact, in honor of the fact that this is radioactive, I will wear the gloves through the entire, entire lecture. So the amount of remaining in the body after um, T hours is given by 4e to the minus 0.046t. So if you give me the time, I'll be able to figure out how much is left in the body. We're starting with 4, I remind you. We start with 4. OK, what is the amount of sodium-24 that remains in our patient's body after 5 hours? So how would you find that? Well, I'm asking for what is the amount after 5 hours. So that's just asking for A of 5. And that's pretty easy. It's just 4 times E to the minus 0.046 times 5. And you can plug that into a calculator, uh, minus 0.046, multiply it by 5, and take E to that power, and then multiply it by 4. And what you get is numerically 0.7945 micrograms. Units here are micrograms. OK, so that means that, remember, we started with 4 micrograms at the beginning. And now we're down after 5 hours to 0 0.7945 uh, micrograms. So you can see it's leaving the body reasonably quickly. OK, now another question we could ask is, what is the half-life? What is the half-life of this radioactive substance? Now, remember, half-life is the amount of time required so that you have the amount cut in half. So how could you figure that out? Well, we know that we started with 4. So if we started with 4, then what would the amount be when we would have half? Well, plainly, 2. So the question really is, what is the time, how long do I have to wait for the amount that remains to be equal to 2 since I started with 4? So I can set up an equation that looks like this. 2 equals 4e to the minus 0.046t. And now I have to solve this for t. OK, so that's an exponential equation. I can divide, first of all, both sides through by the 4 to get rid of that. And so I see a 1 half. So I'd see 1 half equals e to the minus 0.046t. Now, how do you solve an exponential equation? Well, if you have the variable up on top, you don't want it on the, in the attic. You want it on the ground floor. So I'll take the natural log of everything and use the property of exponents and logs. This can be pulled out as a coefficient. So if I natural log both sides. I see the natural log of a half equals the natural log of e to the minus 0.046t. And now I use properties of logs and exponents that tells me if I have an exponent in a log, I can pull that out in front and it becomes a coefficient, which is exactly the point of taking logs. When I do that, I still have the natural log of 1 half on this side. But now on this side, I see minus 0.046t. And then it's multiplied by the natural log of e. But what is the natural log of e? The natural log of e, well, natural log is just log base e. And I'm taking that of e. So what's the exponent I have to raise e to in order to get e? 
Well, it's 1. Natural log of e is 1. So in fact, I'm not even going to write it. Well, now that solving for t is a piece of cake, I just divide everything through by negative 0.046. So I see t equals the natural log of a half divided by minus 0.046. Now, before I compute that, let's just think and say, there could be a problem here. Because t is time. It's the waiting time to have half-life. And I see a negative sign there. So maybe, in fact, this is going to be a sort of a weird answer. How could the time be negative? How do I have to wait? So how, do I, how come I have to go backwards in time in order to have half as much? Sounds like there could be a problem. Until you remember that if you're taking the natural log of a number that's less than 1, that natural log will be negative. So in fact, the top here is actually negative. So negative over negative, that's going to be OK. We should get a positive answer. And you could plug this into a calculator, and you would see that we'd have 15.068 hours. So that's the half-life. That's the half-life. So in fact, if you wait 15.06 hours, the amount you have should be uh, half of what you, what you have. OK, great. Great, 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 great. Except, you know, I have to admit I'm a little bit worried about one little teeny thing here. You know what I'm worried about? So let's just think about this now. This is all live, live math, live math. This is great. And safe math, because I'm wearing my gloves. But if the half-life here is 15, then how come when I wait just five hours, I'm already down to a fraction? That doesn't sound right to me. So let's recalculate that and see if, in fact, we've made a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute this number once again. Maybe I just made a mistake when I computed that. So let's see if I can. Oh, no. Of course, now I'm not in calculator mode. Oh, no, no. Shoot. Oh, shoot. OK, if I only knew how to get out of this. Oh, there we go. OK. OK, so let's compute this again. So we take minus 0.046, and we multiply it by 5. OK, and I'm going to take e to that thing. So I take e to minus 0.046 times 5. And aha! You see, I did make a mistake, because that value that I have written here is just this e part. I never multiplied it by 4. I never multiplied this by 4. Look how I caught my own mistake. So if I multiply it by 4, ah, I get a much happier answer. I get 3.17 stuff micrograms. Now that makes a lot more sense. And look how I caught it. I caught it just by not just reporting the answers, but by thinking about what's going on. If I have to wait 15 hours to have half as much, and I start with 4, 15 hours later, I'm only going to have 2 left. How come 5 hours later, I'd have 0.79 left? That doesn't make sense. I should have more than half left over, and sure enough, I do have more than half. So notice I was able to catch an error I made just by thinking through my answers. It's a really important lesson, actually. OK, so anyway, terrific. We found out the half-life. Now here's a question I could ask a little follow-up question, a little bonus. And the bonus is, um, how long would we have to wait in order for us to have one microgram left? Well, there's two ways of doing this problem. One is just to set up this thing. If you have one microgram left, you just set a to equal 1, and you solve this for t, just like we did before with the half-life, taking logs and so forth. Or you could be a little bit tricky and realize that once you know the half-life, how many half-lives do you have to wait if you start with 4 to get down to 1? Well, one half-life. One, if you start with 4, one half-life gets you down to 2. Another half-life will get you down to 1. So in fact, all you have to do is say that's going to be two half-lives. So you multiply this answer by 2. So it would just be 2 times the half-lives. And of course, that's 30.13 something hours. So once you know the half-life, you can actually figure out all sorts of things. Or you might want to practice just doing this method of solving this and seeing the exact same answer. In either case, um, you can see that in the real world, these um, radioactive substances actually do obey the exponential laws of decay. And so now that our experiment is over, try these. And if you don't have the gloves, be careful.